good morning everyone once again welcome to our series of uh, technical presentations on electromagnetic transients applic simulation applications today's topic is transient recovery voltage studies or trv studies my name is darshan mutamuni and i will be giving you a brief introduction and then my colleague lalin kotalawala will take over lalin is in charge of electromagnetic transient studies at Manitoba Hydro International. So today we will be talking about, uh, we will discuss, we will briefly discuss what TRV is, like the, the applicable or the relevant standards that we follow when we perform TRV studies. We will discuss important key considerations that people should be aware of when they perform TRV studies. And based on that, we will discuss how, what uh, we will discuss the important features that should be included in the study model, in, in, included in the PSCAD model. And we will discuss where we might find the data to develop the PSCAD study model. Then we will discuss study scenarios, the faults and different scenarios that one should study in order to make sure that your breaker will be able to interrupt a current successfully okay so as an as an introduction trv is the voltage that would appear across the breaker immediately following a current interruption right to interrupt a current you have to start opening the you have to open the breaker or you have to pull the poles apart when you pull the poles apart the current does not get interrupted right away right um, inside the breaker inside between the poles an arc will get established so the current will get keep flowing through this arc so during that period when the breaker is closed or during the period when there is an arc flowing through the breaker obviously the voltage across the breaker is zero because it's a short right but once the breaker interrupts the current typically we assume that the breaker interrupts a current when the current reaches a natural zero a zero crossing then a voltage can develop voltage will develop across the breaker poles if you look at this diagram the voltage the trv voltage across the breaker is simply the difference between the voltages at the two ends trv is simply u1 in this diagram minus u2 when everything is settled when the breaker is open and successfully if it has successfully interrupted the current the breaker should withstand the voltage difference between the in this case between system one and system two that is that is the purpose of the breaker but let us see what happens immediately following this current interruption current interruption or opening of a breaker is disturbing is a disturbance to your circuit essentially you are breaking a circuit into two two uh, disconnect or isolated circuits circuit one system one and system two so you have disturbed the circuit and we discussed during our very first webinar that when you disturb an electric circuit electromagnetic transients are initiated so this is what happens you open the breaker when the current gets interrupted the voltage across the breaker eventually will settle to a steady 60 or 50 hertz uh, the voltage but because of the transients because of the electromagnetic transients immediately following the breaker like let us say during the first quarter cycle you can have very high frequency transients appear, appearing across the breaker so this is what we generally refer to as the transient recovery voltage if the magnitude of this trv is too high or if the rate of rise of this voltage how fast this voltage builds up is too much 
then the breaker may not be able to successfully interrupt the current it may race strike so that is your tree rv issue so in other words you have to make sure that the rate of rise of your voltage as well as the magnitude of the voltage immediately following the current interruption is within the capability of that breaker right each breaker would have a capability to successfully withstand and interrupt a current uh, of uh, a volt current assuming that the resulting trv magnitude and the rate of right is within a certain limit just to recap what we discussed on our first webinar we said disturbing a, disturbing a circuit disturbing a circuit by opening a breaker closing a breaker or false would initiate electromagnetic transients right in this example to your left right closing the breaker has initiated transients and in this case it is oscillation between lumped lc elements local lc elements l and c elements are oscillating against each other exchanging energy during during half cycles and uh, resulting in this transient oscillation the damping we said is because of any resistance losses in the circuit so this is a transient due to local oscillations the other thing that could happen is when you have transmission lines when you close the breaker to energize a line or when you open a breaker or if there is a fault on a line traveling waves get initiated and these traveling waves right again can give rise to transient voltages at the ends of the line or along the line what we are interested in is the voltage that appears at the breaker which is the voltage at the end of the line so two things local oscillation local oscillations of lump lc elements could give rise to transient voltages traveling waves on transmission lines or cables could also give rise to uh, transient over voltages and both of these phenomena are important when we study uh, trv some of the phenomena some of the trv concerns are due to local oscillations of lc elements some are due to traveling waves so lalin will explain these items in detail here's a simple example like let us say i have a fault on the secondary side of a transformer so in order to clear the fault i want i would like i would open this breaker now face if you consider phase a phase a is shorted to ground in this case so there will not be a voltage on this side of the breaker on the fault side of the breaker it, it's zero so the trv the voltage across the breaker is due to the oscillations on the system side of the breaker right so in this case the transformer inductance any capacitance on the system side would risk would contribute to this voltage v system which would contribute to trv right in this case when you do studies you will realize the key components key parameters that contribute to trv in this case are the inductance l of the transformer and the stray or sorry not the stray the bushing capacitance of the transformer and the breaker any capacitances in the substation connected between the transformer and the breaker would contribute to a lc oscillation so it is important like what i'm highlighting here is it's important to somehow represent the bushing or the and the stray capacitances of the station if you want to analyze trv accurately obviously if you ignore bushing capacitances which we do in most of our studies you will not get meaningful results because you only have a inductance right so tr in trv we are looking at very specific details 
in this local area where the of the breaker in the local substation details of the local substation again i am showing the waveforms the trv waveforms and here i have expanded the trv waveform and you can see high frequencies are involved the the frequency of oscillation will determine the frequency of oscillation will determine how fast this voltage will rise or go up the rate of rise of voltage which is a trv concern is influenced by the oscillation frequency right and the oscillation frequency is given by for a simple lc circuit the oscillation frequency is given by 1 over 2 pi lc so 1 over 2 pi square root of l and c as simple examples if you consider the case of opening a shunt reactor and opening shunt reactors is always a trv concern a concern for, from a trv point of view so you are opening this breaker you have the reactor l i mean it's a real shunt reactor it's a designed reactor so l you can say is can be high whereas the capacitance in this case once you open this breaker what matters for trv is what's on this side because once the current is interrupted the voltage here on the reactor side of the breaker is influenced only by the reactant and any stray or bushing capacitances system doesn't have an impact for this voltage so you can see L is L, but the C is your stray and bushing capacitance. It, it, it typically is in the picofarad range, very small, right? So if C is small, you can see that F, the frequency can be very high and give rise to high rate of rise in the TRV or the voltage, right? Let us take another example as a simple illustration. Now, let us consider a transformer. So the capacitances I have shown are the bushing capacitances. Transformer, we can think in terms of a magnetizing inductance and some leakage inductance. Magnetizing inductions, inductance of a transformer is much, much higher, much, much higher compared to the small leakage, right? So in this case, the primary side or the left hand side is still connected to the system or something here so the windings are coupled and the coupling effect gets into the picture so when you open this breaker you will see that the oscillation is mainly because of this capacitance here and the leakage the frequency right the frequency of oscillation would be determined by the capacitance of this winding or the bushing plus and the inductance is really the effective inductance is more the leakage than the magnetizing inductance right? so you will have a certain characteristic of trv for this case on the other hand if you are de-energizing the same transformer let us say you clear the fault the breaker is now open okay the breaker is open so this winding is effectively open one can argue that there is a bushing capacitance and it has a path but bushing capacitance we said is very small so this is effectively open now when you open this breaker the oscillating circuit is the bushing capacitance here plus the large magnetizing inductance plus of course the leakage but leakage is small right so you see a different you see the difference right depend you are just opening the opening breakers on either the right hand side or the left hand side depending on what you are doing the oscillating circuit the uh, the inductance of the oscillating circuit is different and you can have different characteristics and uh, these are good things to have as background knowledge if you like Laleen would show you over the next few minutes if you model the system correctly if you follow certain practices 
when you model your PSCAD case for TRV studies, you don't have to worry about all these things. The software will take care of this. But really, it's good to know these things because TRV is all about details. And if you forget certain details, you can get really misleading results. So with that, I'm going to hand over the presentation to Lalin, who will go through the definitions of TRV, uh, modeling, modeling aspects, and some examples. Lalin, over to you. OK, good morning, everybody. Uh, I think that should give you some background about the, uh, the TRV phenomena. Let's have a look into uh, some simulation aspects and uh, some example cases uh, related to the same phenomena. So uh, you already know that uh, Darshana gave you some background about upon uh, interrupting the current, uh, you will see a, a voltage across the breaker, which is having a, a transient period as well as some steady state period. So uh, the, the initial period, this transient period is the main concern in, in TRV studies. So the uh, so this area is as mentioned here, defined as the uh, transient recovery voltage. And then when you damp out all the transients and come to the, uh, the steady state, then we say it's a recovery voltage. This is assuming that one side is source, other side is the load. So you see the uh, source size and simply you see the source side voltage here. So uh, main aspects during the, uh, the TRV study is the, the inertial uh, transient area where you see uh, the one aspect is the rate of rise of recovery voltage where you define the initial rate of the, uh, the, the rising voltage here and also obviously the TRV peak value peak because the, the initial value is very important. Um, uh, as soon as the, uh, the breaker pores apart and the current is in, interrupted, still breaker pores are not in the full rest position. These pores can be still close each other. In those kind of situations, um, uh, there's a high rise in the voltage can cause Early strike. Therefore, the uh, the main concern is the the initial rise of the voltage across the breaker, then uh, the the peak value of the TRV. Generally, the uh, let's see what's happening during the opening process of the breaker. Generally, the the, the breaker may take 10 to 15 millisecond, depending on the manufacturer as well as the uh, the breaker type. Um, it may take some time to fully open the breaker. So. As long as soon as you command breaker to open, right, so the there will be an arc between the breaker poles until uh, it will extinguish uh, at the next current zero of the the current waveform. So basically, between the uh, actual opening position of the poles and the actual interruption, it means arc is extinguished. This arc will continue the current. So particularly in this period. Mm -hmm. um, so this will arc will definitely weaken the uh, the media. There's generally a sepsis or any other media in the breaker. And after that point, if you see an uh, excessive opening, the successfully uh, interrupting the current, this is the voltage across the breaker. You see, if you see the green one, for example, um, that particular phase. So the after distinguishing the uh, current, you see the voltage here. If this voltage is excessive um, across the breaker, there can be a chance of free strike. So that's what we are looking at. So uh, whether there's a possibility for a free strike. So we know that uh, we can measure the uh, transient voltage across the breaker, but how we define whether that uh, transient uh, voltage you measure the cross is uh, okay or not. In other words, the, the whether the breaker can uh, successfully withstand that kind of um, transient voltage. To define that, uh, the IEEE uh, has uh, defined a set of curves, which we call capability curves, um, uh, 
you can see here in the screen uh, the what is basically what has been basically done here is the, the IEEE has defined a set of capability curves so you have to ensure your uh, TRV is within this capability curves it's not crossing so other than that uh, the breaker manufacturer also having uh, capability curves of the breakup they are actual capability curves because they are they are they have to keep at least uh, minimum requirements defined by the IEEE so you can treat IEEE as the minimum capability curve but uh, if you're doing studies if you're lucky you're getting a breaker manufacturer's capability curve that's the actual curve so the uh, uh, you should try to get a breaker manufacturer curves but uh, most of the time it's not possible then you can go through go with the uh, the minimum capability curves defined in IEEE so in PSCAD, we do have a, a component. Uh, uh, it is defining the based on the voltage, uh, the different capability curves. So in simulation, I will demonstrate you in a few minutes uh, how you set these capability curves. So basically, as you see in the right side of your screen, uh, the this is the uh, your TRV measurement, and you just compare with the capability curves. In this particular case, you see this is kind of a violating, uh, it's crossing the uh, capability curves, but your expectations should be your, your TRV measurement is within these curves. Um, so these curves are depending on the, the voltage uh, and the uh, breaker, breaking capability, breaking capacity, in other words. And also, the, depending on the uh, the actual fault current you are you are interrupting. So the uh, there are several um, capability curves for a particular voltage, depending on the the percentage of the current you are interrupting. Is in other words, we call it uh, the duty cycle. So once you come to the modeling considerations, uh, as you know, this is a very fast or very high frequency event. Um, so it's in terms of kilohertz. So therefore, the, uh, the 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 impact is very localized. So when you defining the the study area, it is normally as one or two buses away from a particular station you are studying. So um the the substation itself you're looking at the breaker and its capability so substation itself you have to um model in detail as darshan already mentioned the substation components uh, transformers tray capacitances and all the other elements surrounding uh, contribute to the high frequency oscillation should be modeled so basically uh the the system is one or two buses away just to get the current fault contribution from the surrounding area um, and then mainly you have to concentrate on the substation itself where the breaker is located um, and also when you're modeling uh, the station components I mean the the they are stray capacitance those are the important things in modeling Uh, this is just a demonstration. Uh, for example, you want to do a study in a, this is a, say this is 380 kV system or something. So you have a, a 69 kV substation there uh, through a transformer. So if you want to do the study on this 69 kV system, particularly you model one bus or two buses or a model like this. The whole idea is just to get the correct uh, short circuit level at the 69 kV side. Uh, <clears throat> so the uh, because we define the uh, the capability curves based on the uh, fault current duty or fault current percentage when you compare in the uh, the capability so therefore it's important to ensure that you get the correct uh, short circuit level so therefore i mean the this is it is sufficient to model rest of the system using equivalent sources which is giving the uh, the correct short circuit contribution. 
once come to the inside the station it's very important you have all the uh, lc elements um, inside the model so this is an example uh, uh, what we have model inside the substation for example this is a single line diagram you use single line diagrams of the substations to develop the model um, for here we see uh, high voltage side then you have the transformer before tra and after the transformer you have the disconnect switches some cds this is the main breaker and again disconnect switch some cdvds and you go to the bus bar look uh, lv bus bar and you see the breaker and uh, a feeder here so this is the uh, sld of this particular substation and basically you making a mirror image of the same thing in pscad uh, you you're modeling almost everything but not in detail um, uh, way but ensuring that you always have the, uh, the stray capacitance contribution from all of these elements because uh, dominantly the L elements as Darshan said is coming from transformer but capacitance are always coming from stray capacitances so it's very important to ensure that you model all these stray capacitances and you, then you get the correct um, the, the transients in the substation so then you all the way come here you see the breaker here so our interest is to do the study on this particular breaker and we see the we see how much uh, or we measure the tre of the breaker and see whether it's a violation or not so rest of the system down there um, depending on because normally you do uh, you apply the fault and you clear the breaker so depending on where you apply the fault the the contribution for the oxidation can be from upstream or downstream so depend therefore i mean it's always important to model the everything upstream as well as downstream of the breaker so the challenging part is uh, defining all these stray capacitances because it's, it's not easy to find those values as you say you get the salary diagrams from your client or your substation design department but not necessarily they are providing you any of the stray capacitance information uh, therefore uh, ieee c 3711 uh, suggests you some typical values you can use unless otherwise you can find yourself some of the, uh, the manufacturer uh, manufacturers and uh, equipment manufacturers vendors they do have some information on the transformer for particularly transformer straight capacitance values but uh, if you don't have so only avenue we see uh, ieee c 3711 where they suggest you some of the values depending on the voltage and mv ratings uh, so you can use those values uh, for individual components so most of the cases uh, in, in our study and demonstration here, we are using from uh, IEEE standard. So this is again uh, another slide highlighting the importance of uh, modeling the small stray capacitances because they are not uh, in your SLD diagram, you cannot see them. and. and but you have to understand yourself and model these uh, small stray capacitances depending on the equipment. For example, transformer, you have the, the high side and low side pushing capacitances, the interwinding capacitances, uh, breaker having itself, uh, its pushing capacitance and some disconnect switches in between. So all these stray capacitances contribute to the, uh, the oscillation. Therefore, it is very important um as mentioned here the oscillations is coming the the contribution to the oscillation frequency especially you see that the, all these capacitances will contribute so we know that i mean the the high frequency means you have a a high rrb right the 
low frequency means your your initial rate of rise is slow so therefore i mean the it's very important the frequency of the oscillation trv oscillation um it may lead whether we have a rrv issue or not um and also one important point at the end here you know that i mean the by changing this capacitance value basically or adding a capacitance to the system you can change the frequency of oscillation we will see this in detail in our simulations but uh, this is important point from this equation um uh, the always adding capacitance as you can modify the oscillation frequency as you modify the oscillation frequency you can change the initial rate of rise so the this is a degree of freedom you can play when dealing with trv Uh, this is the uh, one of the other important point. Uh, generally, we see the uh, the TRE violation. We are opening the three phases. Uh, you, we know that I mean they are opening at three different times because the current zero happens at three different instances. Uh, there will be definitely a first fall um, that will open. Normally, in most of the cases, um, uh, we have practically seen and also. In the standard also mentioned the important point is the, the first fall um the first fall opening is very critical um depending on the, what this saying is here depending on the grounding uh, the the uh, the opening first fall opening can be critical uh, because of the neutral point voltages um it can be uh, the trv can be critical uh, depending on the the grounding condition for example here if you have a grounded system here neutral grounded system so as soon as you open this particular breaker your your oscillation is between this inductor and this capacitance here is something like this but if you un, if you have an ungrounded system the oscillation can be through this uh capacitance and there's some inductance and some other capacitance you you definitely know this it will be modified so you see that i mean the uh, uh what we have seen uh, the tre point of view as so so for a grounded system it's always uh, you get a relatively smaller trv and ungrounded system you get very um large trv across the baker so therefore i mean pay we have to pay attention on uh, the your grounding system um, generally you carefully you model it uh, you capture all this information you do not worry uh, but it's yet an uh, important point the other uh, point is the uh, generally we were talking about uh, the the local lc oscillations uh, which will lead to trv there's uh, another important trv type we call it uh, short line trv or short line for trv where you get uh, due to the traveling waves in the um, the line the shape of the trv is not more sinusoidal it's more like so tooth um, so this kind of uh, trv um, can be seen especially you put a fold on a short line i mean several kilometers and then you try to open the breaker there will be traveling waves running back and forth between the breaker and the fold location uh, um, so the uh, that will seen as a sawtooth waveform here so sometimes you may have a uh, critical issues with the, the rate of rise at the beginning um, so this is another aspects when you have a look on the trv um, short line faults um, uh, up to now we discussed about the different trv but um, all of these trvs 
uh, we use uh, some set of capability curves. Once come to the generator bakers, it's totally different. Um, the all the required uh, TRV information for breaker break, generator breaker is defined in IEEE 3713. So um, when we are doing a generator breaker TRV study, depending on where the fault, either the fault is at the generator side, in other words, the fault current contribution from the source side. So we call it system source fault or the fault is on the system side where the actually generator is sourcing the fault uh, through the breaker. So depending on the study, you have different view with the capability curves. So therefore, I mean, the, uh, when we are doing a, a generator breaker TR, we, we have to be carefully uh, select um, correct capability curves, the, um, depending on even the same breaker, depending on which side you have the fault. And also the other point um, is uh, there is a no duty cycle for a uh, generator breaker TRV uh, capability curves. So normally the, they have only one waveform, um, one capability curve. So you check the, the measured TRV against that single envelope. So that single envelope is defined based on the MV rating of the generator as well as the KV rating of the generator. So <clears throat> generally uh, the, um, the, the two capability curves, if you compare the two capability curves, the system source port is a bit relaxed compared with the generator source port um, TRV capability curve. So those are the things just have to have a, um, some kind of idea before you perform the simulation. And also for the generators, you have to perform the out of phase TRV. Um, and also in the same standard, it is defined uh, a different uh, envelope for capability envelope for the out of phase. So that's the main difference in uh, generator breakers compared with the any other station breaker. So any other station break, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you depending on the voltage, uh, you have uh, one set of um, TRV capability curves, but for the generator, even for the same breaker, you may have different capability curves depending on what you are doing. I mean, where are the faults and whether the, it's a port study or the out of phase TRV. So these are the few places you have to have a, um, attention, pay attention when, when you're doing the TRV study. So the uh, other important point is, um, previously I have shown very simple system, but in real life, the substation is very complicated. You may have hundred of breakers and so many bays. Um, so you have to consider always the, um, the credible scenarios and um, uh, uh, you have to consider which breaker is on, which breaker is off in general operation, because based on that, the fault current contribution at for, at the particular place can be different. So the um, it's very important to look at the credible arrangement of the breakers in your substation, and then uh, follow after that you making correct choices of the break operation and then you apply the fault and 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 then perform the TRV. Um, because uh, this is very important because this can be lead to <coughs> fictitious values if you close the open all the breakers or open the breakers <coughs> it may give a wrong a current contribution uh, therefore it's important to look at the credible scenarios. So, <clears throat> sorry. Once come to the, uh, the selecting the study scenarios, um, generally we perform the breaker terminal faults. It means uh, we apply the fault one side, the, both the terminals of the breaker upstream and downstream, and try to clear the breaker. And if it is a line breaker, uh, 
we put a short line um, roughly around two to three kilometers away from the breaker and we apply a fault and then try to clear the breaker and maybe a remote fault uh, which is generally can be in a midline uh, depending on the line length you can define where the fault should be and um, and this is a specific study when you have a series compensated line uh, when we have fault from uh, series compensated lines how you open the breakers and the other thing is the uh, react and transform the energization that is also slightly different from what we um, are talking here uh, once come to the fault type selection um, the worst case scenario is the three phase ungrounded faults uh, but it is not sometimes we consider it as most credible scenario because uh, in a substation close to breaker um, three phase ungrounded fault is not a possibility so most common fault is the the line to ground faults uh, you can also perform the three phase grounded faults so it depends on your selections normally the as this is the sequence of the severity so three phase ungrounded is the most severe case and then uh, three phase grounded fault and single phase uh, if you go with the probability is the, the other way the most probability is having a single phase to ground fault and uh, next three phase ground fault and finally the it's very rare to have a three phase ungrounded fault so um, you have to do engineering judgment uh, when looking at the what kind of at least we can do all the simulations but when you're decision making whether there is a you have to do some mitigate you have to apply some mitigation option or not you can consider which one is more credible and sometimes you can forget about the uh, three phase ungrounded fault it's, it's up to individuals to make engineering judgment uh this is the same thing i already mentioned that um, uh, uh you have to when you're selecting the scenarios you have to do is very credibly uh, some of the scenarios may be meaningless depending on the where you apply where where the other breakers if the other the other breakers are open or closed or so depending on that um i mean you have to carefully select the correct um correct scenarios because there are hundreds of bakers in your system there are there may be so many arrangements uh, you don't want to run all these simulations so you have to sometimes the most of the breakers are having a similar arrangement then it's okay to run a few of those and also make sure that um, uh, the the opening and closing of the the remaining breakers are correctly arranged so you see that i mean some of the scenarios we selected the terminal faults uh, from the uh, uh, the downstream and terminal port of the upstream um, depending on how you define it and then a short line port for this particular breaker we already discussed about the uh, the capability curves um, the important thing is uh, i have to mention here is for general breakers, there are four capability curves per particular voltage. For example, um, as you see here, this all individual capability curve defines the, the fault duty. For example, uh, if you have 40 kilo ampere breaker, right, uh, the actual fault count through the breaker is 24 kilo ampere. We know that the fault duty is 60%, right? Uh, I typically defines four capability curves. The first one, most strict one, is 100% fault current. The next is 60% and 30% and last 10%. Um, so depending on your current for this particular uh, example, if you measure your TRV and TRV cuts only 100% uh, curve, you are okay. I mean, if it's cut, 60% curve, then you have to be careful, um, and and you have to have a mitigation option. You have to apply mitigation option to get rid of the TRV violation. So the uh, uh, so normally <clears throat> you have to take uh, the duty cycle and then compare with the particular uh, capability curve. 
sometimes the um, in practical cases current may be 50 percent or or 70 percent or some values not shown here then um, the IEEE suggests a linear interpolation between the curves so the uh, so you do your own linear interpolation and in PSCAD, I will demonstrate in within a few minutes, uh, you can define your own capability curve. So you can define by interpolating, you can define your own curve and look at and compare with your TRV. Um, depending on the voltage level, uh, I, as far as, yeah. Uh, 72 kilovolts or less, we use um, two parameter capability curves. What do you mean by two parameter is depend, just defining the X value here and Y value here, you can define the envelope. And then you have the, the positive side as well as the negative side. You, you don't know transient is coming from upside or downside. Therefore, I mean, you have to define the envelope for upside as well as downside but you need just only two parameters it means the this is starting point you know the x value and y value then you define the point and you draw a line to that point and then you draw a horizontal line from there so this is the capability curve it's called two parameter curves a 72 kv and above there will be four parameter curves you see that there there's one there are two points here, one point here and another point here especially for 160, still 30 and 10% duty cycles will be still 2%, two, two parameters, but you see the 100% and the 60% uh, you have two points, it means four parameters. So that's how the, uh, the capability curves are defined. Um, this is the TRV module, uh, envelope module in PSCAD. <clears throat> I don't uh, spend much time here because we can see the model inside the monolith. Um, so you, the one thing is depending on the, the, the type of, the, the, depending on the breaker where it's connected, uh, you can select um, different capability curves. Uh, that's defined in IEEE. Um, the, whether the breaker is connected to cable, overhead line, the grounded system, effective grounded system, ungrounded system, or generator fed breakers. So uh, we will discuss in detail in this example case. So these are the uh, some examples again shown here. Uh, you see the uh, envelope and the TRV. In this particular case, there's no violation. Uh, but in this particular case, um, this is zoomed waveform on the your right side. You see that it's, there's a violation for innermost is the 100 and then 60%. Uh, there's a violation for 160%, but not for the 30% or 10%. Or so depending on the current, you can do a calculation and you see that uh, the where the TRV waveform is cutting. So this for example the if the actual fault current duty is uh, for current is more than 50 percent or 60 percent of the uh, the breaker capability this is a violation but actual current is 30 percent or less than that uh, even this case there's no violation so that's the whole point So let's jump into the example case. Um, uh, as shown here, this is a simple system. I mean, just even uh, you see this, there are a few buses uh, here. So just to get the full current contribution to the uh, interested station here. So 69 kV, the whole system is 30, 380 kV for this example case. And the station is, uh, then you have the low voltage side, medium voltage side of 69 kV. So we do a study on the 69 kV breaker. So in between you have the transformer here uh, converting from 380 to 69 kV. Um, so let's go to the, uh, the example case. You see the example case here in PSCAD. So 
Um, let's go into the page module. As I mentioned earlier, the, the system is simple. Even uh, you don't want this big system, you can have a, just one bus away, but make sure that you have the correct equivalent sources, um, which is giving the uh, correct fault contribution to the, uh, the, the substation. If you go inside here, as I mentioned earlier, so you have the transformer and the disconnect switches, breaker, disconnect switch, and then go to the feeder. But importantly, the I have modeled all these three capacitances contribute into the oscillation. Um, once you set up this model, then this is the breaker, and you have to measure the the, the voltage across the breaker, and you feed it to the uh, our breaker component, and then breaker components know when the uh, by the breaker. The other thing is the breaker status um, uh, when it's open or closed. Those information also has to provide it to the component. Then it knows when the breaker is opening, and it can draw the um, uh, envelopes uh, based on the opening point of each phase individually. And this side you see the um, the envelopes and you can do the TRV. In particular phase, for phase example, phase A, you can draw phase A envelope and also the TRV measurement together, like shown in here. Inside the component, uh, <clears throat> um, you can go with IEEE or IEC. Now both of them are consolidated. They use the same waveforms, therefore you, you can select either one you get the same result. Um, sometimes as I said earlier, uh, these are standard waveforms giving 400%, 60%, 30% and 10% uh, all duties, but you can define your own um, capability code interpolating those standard uh, envelopes. So you can use both of them, IEC as well as your own one or complete you can go for you use to define because this is especially provided for when you're getting information from the breaker manufacturer if breaker manufacturer gives you the capability curves so you have to go in the user define and then you define the two points or four points um, in the capability curve as i mentioned earlier the other one is the um, the generator breaker so we can select here the, when we're performing on the generator breaker so in this particular example um we select IEC and the other one is uh, is one category in IEEE defined for the uh, breakers connected to the cables and S2 is for the overhead lines and they are under 100 kV and then above 100 kV you have uh, this category um, effectively a network system and rare cases um, in about 100 and above, normally the, you should have very effectively grounded system, but rare cases you may have a non-effectively grounded system. In that case, uh, you have to use uh, this particular category. Um, and then when you selected particular category and particular standard and particular category, and then you can go and select your standard breaker i mean the year uh, is either 15 kb 17 kb or like that the 69 kb system uh, the standard breaker is 72.5 kb so you select that here um, and the if you select a user defined um, here the point whether you have the two parameter curves or four parameter curves depending on the manufacturer provided you and you define the points, um, the X, Y points of the uh, capability curve here. So depending on number of curves you're having. And the last is the um, the generator breaker. Then you define the the breaker generator uh, MVA as well as the uh, the rated voltage. Then uh, the the curves coming automatically from the uh, module. So that's how you set the module. So once you set the module, uh, in our case, we use IEC or IEEE, it doesn't matter. So the, the cable 
uh, connected uh, breaker. We assume that uh, the from the transformer to breaker there is a cable and a short cable and um, then rated voltage is 72.5 kV. And this side you, as I said earlier, just plot the envelope with a particular actual TRE measurement. So both together, this is a phase A, phase B, phase C. I ran the first simulation already, and um, you see here, um, if I zoom a little bit more, um, the TRE is cutting all the, the in almost 100, 60, 30, 10, all the curves. So this is a clear violation of TRE in this particular case. So you don't want to worry about even the, the duty cycle, how much the breaker current. So, but in this case, uh, you can see here, I mean, I already scaled this, um, the current um, using uh, a factor of 0.707. This is used to make it from peak value to RMS value. So I measure the current here, the positive peak and negative peak and divided by to roughly I'm getting um, around uh, uh, 10 and yeah, around 10 kilo amperes, right? So the, um, the uh, uh, so it's maybe my fault here, duty is around 25% in that case. Um, so, but even we, I am cutting all the, um, all the capability curves here. So this is a clear violation. So as we know, this is LC oscillation, um, uh, sinusoidal oscillation. You know that the, the higher the frequency uh, of the oscillation, there's a more tendency to cut the waveform. So you have a very low frequency. It goes like this and um, we can get rid of this TRE violation. So to get a lower frequency, um, I mentioned in my presentation, the frequency is F equals one over two phi root LC. So you can increase the C or effective capacitance of the system, which will reduce your frequency. So basically what I'm doing is we're adding a surge capacitor here. Um, you can buy off the shelf, this surge capacitor is very cheap. Um, uh, if you buy um, off the shelf. So you just put a surge capacitor. In this case, I put just 50 nanofarad. Um, you can change this value and check which value suits for you. Uh, this particular case, I'm thinking uh, the 50 nanofarad surge capacitor would be helpful. Until simulation is running, so let me show you a couple of other things. So generally, the uh, you don't want to run these cases so long. Um, uh, maybe I mean minimum time you want to see the results and solution time step can be really small because of this high frequency local oscillations. Uh, it can be um, uh, a microsecond or even less than 0.5 microsecond or something like that. So this is the uh, the simulation time step and the, the duration. Um, now we have the results here. You see that I'm in the, yes, my requirement is somewhere here, a 30% curve, but I am far away from there. Even I'm not reaching the 60% curve. So the 50 nanofarad uh, surge capacitor is a good solution for this uh TRV violation we, I had previously. So then you can suggest um, 15 uh, the particular surge capacity. Even you can optimize by changing the value and you can run simulations and check um, where's the uh, actual TRV compared with the capability curve. So uh, finally there is another example on generator. A circuit breaker. Um, this is a generating station. Uh, let me show you in high level. Generating station and connected to the system. Uh, system is in this case particularly I use equivalent source to get the correct current contribution. 
and there's a short line in between and uh, this is a generator station they have multiple generators but i have model for simplification only just two again uh, i'm not going on details but you see that uh, the most of the uh, state capacitances are captured and the, all the other main equipments are there and uh, this particular one would take a little bit longer time to run. Um, I already has run the case. The importantly in uh, um, when you're selecting the waveform, uh, the capability curves, uh, you have to go user define uh, or even source fault. But uh, if you refer to the uh, uh, IEEE C 3713. Um, it will give it gives you the information about the capability curves, what you have to use for the, the system side faults or system source fault or generator source fault or even out of phase opening. So in that case, you have to define the uh, based on the MV rating and based on the voltage, you have to define the two points. Uh, for the capability curves, um, and you can define those two values here. I mean, we can share this example cases with you, and you can have a look further. Um, and you see this particular case. I mean, the uh, you have a single curve. There's a no fault duty for the generator breakers. So in this particular case, um, we don't have a violation. Actually, this is because of the uh, uh, some stay, uh, large stay capacitances, uh, they contribute towards a low frequency. So therefore, I mean, I don't see any RRV or any violation here, but main idea here is to demonstrate you how to perform the simulation. So uh, as I previously shown, the important thing is to once come to the generator um, breaker, the importantly, you have to put correct uh, capability curve. Uh, it's not the uh, generic um, capability curve. So either you can select from our source here or you can define yourself by referring to the IEEE document. So with that, I think uh, that's what I have to show you. Um, yeah, that's all from my side. So thank you very much and we will meet again in two weeks.